Hi everyone, I'm Jason Hayes, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate and create a volume report for the secondary containment area of a storage tank. The secondary containment area is generally a dirt or concrete structure built around the storage tank that is meant to contain any product that may leak out for one reason or another. Alright, so I've got just a pretty standard storage tank here. I'm going to select it from my list window and then in production mode I'm going to click on the edit tab and then click on the sampling tool. Okay, so once the sampling tool is open I'm going to select the ground extraction option from the drop down list. There it is. And then I just need to click on extract. What this is going to do is then go through and extract out everything that's not part of the ground. That would be the tank, any vehicles or people or survey equipment that's not part of the ground. Okay, so now it's finished. I'm just going to go up and change the cloud rendering to grayscale so you can see the areas highlighted in red that are going to be removed. Okay, so there. Everything in red, the storage tank, you see we've got uh, some survey equipment down here, some hoses, some pipes, steps, ladders, all of this is going to go away and then we're going to be left with just the clean area that's the ground. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on create and then in my list window I now have a new object called ground extraction. Okay, so now I want to go and select my main project cloud, not the ground extraction object that I just created, but the main project cloud. And then I'm going to go up here to the top and select the storage tank tab. And then I want to select tank setup. Now this is going to run through and extract just the storage tank itself. So we isolated the ground, now we want to isolate the storage tank. So now that we're in the tank setup tool, I'm going to go through and in step one, I'm just going to define what kind of tank it is. In this case, it's a vertical cylinder. And where'd we scan it from? In this case, we scanned it from the outside. Next step's pretty simple. I just need to click on classify. Now the classification step, um, it's going to take a little while depending on the size of the tank and the amount of points in the point cloud. It's usually not too long. Once it finishes, you can see here, it's isolated the storage tank in just blue and everything else in red, like these ladders and pipes and nozzles sticking out, uh, basically everything that's not part of the storage tank. That's not always perfect, so I could click on edit if I needed to, but in this case it's good enough. I'm just going to click on create. Okay, close the tool. Now, if I just move my list window up here, it's created another new object. This is going to be a storage tank object. The next thing I want to do is select both the new tank object and the ground extraction object. Select them both, then under the storage tank tab, select the tank secondary containment tool. The tank secondary containment tool is laid out pretty much like other RealWorks tools. It's going to start with step one, and in step one, I want to go in and define the outer wall boundary. So I'm going to click select area. It's going to lock me into a 2D view. Then I want to just click to draw a fence around this retaining wall about a meter away from the outside toe. Double click to end that fence and then click on the green checkbox to validate this area. You can see I'm no longer locked into 2D, I can rotate, and then just need to click on compute. So now what it's doing is it's going through and analyzing the entire retaining wall around this area. It's looking for the lowest parts, the spill point. And so it's going to identify that. You can see it's finished processing here. It's identified the spill point the low area around the boundary of the wall and calculated the volume from that spill point going down to the bottom. So if I zoom in here, you can see there's the spill point. It's identified that right over here in the corner. And you can see there's a boundary going around the outside of the wall. If I come over here and undisplay the tank and hide the point cloud, now you can clearly see there's the volume, the spill point and the boundary. If I hide the volume, now you get a really clear view of the spill point and that boundary around the wall. So that's the lowest area around the wall. So there's the volume. And now I just need to click on Generate Report. Okay, so in the Save As dialog, 
need to identify the location where I want to save this report, and in the file name field, I need to give it a name. I'm just going to name this containment volume report. Whoops. Let's just fix that real quick. Okay, and then I just need to click on save. Okay, so after I've clicked save, I get a dialog asking for a few parameters for this report. First, this is the volume of the storage tank that's going to be displayed. This is just the storage tank and that came from the tank setup tool. Next is a pass or fail ratio. We can put in a ratio that we want this secondary area to hold. It could be 150, 110, you can change it. Next, we're going to move on to the rainfall area. So this would be an amount of rainfall that you could expect in a specific period. Then you can go in and enter the estimated surface area and also the estimated volume. Now in the next step, it's going to ask what units we want to use. Now if you don't see the units here that you like, the report is uh, able to be edited. So then you could go in and edit and change those. Okay, and then all I need to do is come down here and click on Create. Then the report's going to open in a rich text file format. Uh, it can be opened with Microsoft Word. Um, it's fully editable, so I can go in here and, for example, change my name. Like I said, if you didn't like the units that were available, you could convert, change those yourself. Here you see the ratio, 110. It didn't actually hold that. You can see over here in red, it says exceeds. We're actually only holding about 15% of the storage tank. Now, if you'd like to make your report a little bit more visually appealing, inside of Trimble RealWorks in the 3D view, you can position the point cloud and the tank just the way you want. Maybe you have the spill point up front. Then click on the Media tab and select Capture Screen. So this will allow you to take a screen snap, save it as a BMP file, just going to give it a name, click OK. And then in the report, you can click on the Insert tab, and then click on Picture. Browse to where you saved the picture, select it, and then now you've got a nice picture to go in your report. So not only do you have the text and the tables, but also now you have a nice graphic element to go along with it. Now that's pretty much it for the report. You can go ahead and close that. Of course, you want to save it before you close it. And in the secondary containment tool, click Create. It's going to create this secondary containment group object. And now if I go inside of that object, that group object, and look inside there, it's got each of the components that we just created. So uh, to demonstrate that, I'm just going to come up here and hide everything. And then just one at a time display these. I'm clicking there's the spill point. There's our perimeter around there. And then, of course, if I wanted to export these, I could just select on any one. And then up under the Home tab, click on Export, and then choose Export Selection. And, of course, I can export that out to whatever uh, CAD type that I need. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video on creating a secondary containment volume report for storage tanks in Trimble RealWorks.